Alrighty guys, this is Indie Pixel here, and in this Houdini tutorial, I am going to walk through the process of creating a tiling brick. So here you can see I have this mesh right here, and it's actually utilizing some of the, the newer features inside of Houdini 16, so I really wanted to cover some of those things. And we're also going to go through baking this, this guy out, so you can see here I actually have that brick material baked out and tiled there. Uh, and if I come down here, you can also see that the, the brick mesh is also tiling, which is awesome. So uh, what I wanted to do is just kind of walk through the, the graph here and um, talk about how it's constructed. So let's go through and select the grid here first. And I'm going to show my, oops, I'm going to show my uh, properties up here or my parameters just so we can see. So uh, I started with the grid here. All right. And I uh, divided it in the rows. That way I ended up with a bunch of primitives here, right? Because I want to loop through each one of these rows here and add bricks to it. Uh, and I just centered it up on the grid. Now you don't necessarily have to do that. Uh, you could leave this anywhere you want. It could be flat too. It could be laying down on the grid as well. Um, so not necessary there, but the rows are. So then I just reverse it. So it was pointing forward and Z. Again, not necessary, but I like to have all my stuff pointing in Z like that. All right, so then from there, what I did is created a for each subnetwork. All right, that way I could loop through all the uh, the primitives. So I just did a each primitive point here. Okay, so I just did that. And you'll notice that what that does is it slices each row up into the bricks in a, a random width, basically. And it also offsets each of those guys. So let's go dive in here and take a look at this. All right, so it's not huge or anything, which is awesome. All right, so the first thing is I created a horizontal size, and basically that is storing. So we have here, we have attribute create. All right, so I first create an attribute that stores the loop iteration, all right, and creates a, a random value for that. Okay, so, and this is already hooked up as a HDA, so we're to jump out. So that's why I have some of these properties already hooked up, but we can still look at this. So basically the way that this works is uh, we do a fit and then I do a random value of the current iteration that we are on. So the stamp for value is giving me the current iteration that we are on inside of this for each loop. Okay. And then basically I put that, let's actually go into the, expression editor, so alt E, just so we can look at it without having to keep clicking on it there. All right, so then I just, and that creates a, a random offset range in X and in Y for me. I mean, in X. Okay, so let's close that. And then I have the X offset right here. And basically this is getting the size in X and dividing it by the number of bricks, right? And I'm gonna use this to allow me to cut um, each of those bricks. Okay, so let me come down here into another for loop. Okay, and I'm going to create a random width. Now this particular value over here is actually giving me a different width. Okay, so in that for loop, because what I want to try to do is slice this guy up, this whole primitive, uh, depending on how many bricks I want. Okay, so I'm using the um, iteration from the metadata here inside of this loop. Okay. And I'm getting that vert loop data and the iteration value from that, okay? And just doing another fit and just doing a random range, okay? And then I feed that into this, all those values, all those attributes I created, I feed that into this knife right here. So we take a look, it's kind of a big one. And really what this expression is doing is it's just making sure that uh, we don't actually go to the, we don't end up slicing too far over. So I'm trying to fit the, the slices within this width right here, but also utilizing all those random values that I created. All right. So then finally, we just use that value inside of that knife and we get the slices. Okay. Boom. And then I just move it over a little bit. And that is the final offset in X, like so. 
All right. So then with that all set up, it's pretty simple at this point. Uh, we can just go through each of these um, primitives here now. And that's what I do in this loop. So let's go through each of these primitives here. Let me turn off the primitive numbers. And that goes and creates all the bricks for us. All right, so if we were to jump in here, it's pretty simple. I just get the current primitive that we're on. Do a transform, and now this transform is doing some randomization as well. So I'm translating it uh, back and forth in Z, and then I'm rotating it in Z. That, that way you get a little bit of rotation on the brick itself. All right, and I just centered up the pivot here. Then I extrude the brick out. All right, make sure to include the back. Then I poly beveled it and added some normals and then remeshed it. And remeshing is awesome because it, it does actually break it up and make it look kind of like a, a roughed up brick. All right, so then from that, we get all of our bricks. And it's tiled already. Um, and you can verify that by creating a copy tr and transform node. All right. Awesome. So then I just center it up so that way when I go to do the baking, um, I can utilize the same grid over here. So you can see that I have my, my low res grid. And if I didn't center that up, I'd, st I'd be right over here. Looks like it would actually still kind of work. Uh, let's, let's go back. No, no, it wouldn't. So that's why I centered it back up. So that way we get a perfect tile. Make sure it's centered in Z, which you don't necessarily have to do. I just kind of made it nice and clean that way. <clears throat> so then I come down here and I do a little bit of um, colorizing over here. Okay, so first what I want to do is just measure and I go and get the curvature. Now you can also use the, um, the uh, game development uh, curvature. There's the game dev calculate curvature. And I've noticed that this also has some problems in here. If I go and connect up the attribute blur here like this, then it, then it seems to work. So then once that is up and running, I just hit auto calculate and then colorize, visualize as color. And that starts to, to give me what I want. But in this case, I'm not going to use it right now. Um, I did my own curvature. So basically I, I used a measure node and set it to curvature, all right? And then I just did my own attribute blur, like so. And I just took in that attribute curvature because when we put a measure node down, it it adds the curvature attribute. So we can take a look at that in the geometry spreadsheet. So it adds the curvature attribute to all the points. And then I use an attribute blur to blur it out. So now it blurs out that value, okay? And then I just uh, colorize it, and that gives me my curvature value for the bricks. Pretty cool. So then over here, we have a connectivity going on. And all I'm doing is just checking to see if one brick is attached to another brick. This way, I can actually randomize the colors on each brick. OK, so I just use a connect connectivity mode and or node, excuse me, and um, put the brick attribute on it. And then I did a partition using that brick attribute as the rule and then you just colorize it random so I just say random from attribute with on a color node and use that brick attribute okay and that gives it random colors and then we have the point VOP here and inside of this point VOP I'm just adding the random colors and then colorizing the the uh, curvature so if we dive into this guy let's actually maximize this here so all I'm doing is taking the current color all right, and that's that curvature value that's coming in. Um, I'm multiplying it. Let's see here. <clears throat> Oops, keep doing that. All right. So there we go, and we multiply those two guys together. Oh, I see I'm taking the color, the randomized color, then I multiply those two. And really, you don't have to. Um, it's just a, I found, I was just messing around with different effects, so I just, took the uh, the X and the Y colors and multiplied them together. And then it did a fit. This just allows you to 
adjust some of those colors. So I actually need to visualize that here. This allows you just to kind of have a levels adjustment in a way, right? Pretty cool. All right. So then this is the curvature right here. I'm just pulling that curvature value in using a import, import point node. And then I'm doing a fit. Just so again, I have those levels adjustments there. This allows you to really clamp it up. So you can get whatever kind of effect you want. And really, I just use the color mix. And that allows me then to colorize it. And uh, you can see I just exposed one of the values there. And these, these two values right here. And this allows me then to tweak it from out here. And that is basically how I did that. I know kind of went through that a little bit fast, but um, I'll make this available uh, on, my, on the site. All right, so then I just add some normals and then I merged it all together with the grout. So let's cover the grout over here. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm pulling in the grid that I've divided up here. Did a transform, so it's sitting a little more forward. I did a remesh, and that's just so I had more points to work with. And then I did a point bop, and inside of this point bop, um, I'm just giving it a, a noise just to make it kind of bumpy. All right, so I just did a turbulent noise and a displacement, pretty standard stuff. Uh, but this, then what I did is I did an intersection analysis. Now this is a really cool node. Um, it allows you to see and it gives you points where uh, two surfaces interact, intersect, basically. So now I have a bunch of points where all those bricks are intersecting that grid. Super cool. Wish I would have had this years ago. <laughs> um, and then I do a VDB from particles. And one thing to note on this is I had to make the, um, the point radius scale really small. And the voxel size is relatively small. And then I convert that to a polygon mesh. And you'll notice that you can use the ISO value to kind of squish it down also to get what you want. Um, and then I just run that through another point bop, which also takes a curl noise and a turbulent noise. All right, so I'll just, you can just hook those up and start playing with the values. And that really just gave it more of that brick grout looking type of effect. All right, so then I use a normal, and that's just to give it some normals. And then I colorized it, which I didn't do anything fancy for that. And then just merged those back together, and that gave me gave me the perfect grout. Super awesome. Actually has some bump to it and everything, so it worked out really well. And then finally, um, I come down here and just clip all that stuff off. Now, you don't have to do this, but I was just messing around with different techniques, so that's why those two guys are there. And so basically, you can verify the tiling of this one centerpiece here by using another copy and transform. And boom, there we go. There's some color issues. Just need to work on that, but you can always fix that in Substance Designer or in Photoshop or wherever. <clears throat> At least the, the meat of the model is there. And basically, I went and baked it all out and ended up with this on a plane. So there's my, let's untemplate the, the grid there. So that is the actual texture right there. Um, it's not a fancy texture. It's more or less, more or less about the, the technique of building the, uh, building this graph. All right, so that's basically what I wanted to show. So uh, to do the, uh, the high res and low res bake, all I did was took that initial grid that I created, uh, created some UVs for it. So if I switch over to, to the uh, UV editor, um, just transform. I just moved it up a little bit. It's weird. <clears throat> and then just to put in a null node, that way I can access the low. And I created another null node for the high. And so then if we go to our um, out context or rendering context here, 
I just have a uh, games baker. All right, so you can get to the games baker if you're not familiar with that in the game development tool set. There's the game baker right there. So you just hit that and it automatically throws this down for you. And all I did then is, in this case, just I'll put the base color and normal map. All the others work just fine too, but all you need to do, it's really simple to use. Set your resolution, set the path where you want the images to be saved out. And then just select the low and the high from these guys. So I just hit the, the little node selector deal. All right. And I just go in and find that low null node. And same for the high. Easy peasy. And when you're ready, just hit render. And it will bake it out for you. All right. So hopefully that's useful. Like I said, I'll make this uh, available up on the, the website so everyone can see. Or you can use it or just dissect it. You know, it's pretty easy to do, but it's fun to mess around with uh, figuring out how to use Houdini to create these tiling textures. I mean, shit, you can even use this as a tiling model if you want. Uh, obviously, I'd have to cl or close off the sides here, but pretty good. All right, thanks so much, guys.